Hello everybody, we're going to start on 6-6 six, six, systems of linear inequalities. Now let me see, I'm going to turn on the light and see if that helps. Oh, that's kind of bright. That's pretty good. Okay, um, so systems of linear inequal inequalities is a lot like systems of linear equalities. You're going to have more than one. That's what it means to have a system. You're going to have more than one inequality. And remember, an inequality is greater than, less than, so on and so forth. All right, um, let's go ahead and talk about the definition of a system of linear inequalities. This is, the solution to this is where the shading overlaps and maybe, that's, a, that's an important word, maybe where the lines cross, and I'm going to put boundary lines because that's what they are. Okay, you're going to graph everything and where they overlap is the answer. Now let's talk about yesterday. Um, can you remember some stuff about yesterday? How do you graph the following? Well, we have to solve for y to begin with. That's how you graph everything. So negative 4y is less than a positive 2x when you move it over, plus 8. Divide by negative 4, side by side, you must divide. You get y. Now be very careful when you divide by a negative. That's why I put this on here. When you divide by a negative, what do you do? Flip your sign. And you get negative 1 half x, and now you have a minus 2. When we graph this, we start with our y-intercept of negative 2 on the y-axis. And then from that point, we go down 1, right 2, down 1, right 2, down 1, right 2. And if you're feeling, you know, if you're feeling extra ambitious, go ahead and go up 1, left 2. You don't have to, but whatever. Before you connect it with a solid line, you better be remembering to connect this with, that's right, a broken line because it's not equal to... What a good warm-up problem. So get a little broken line on there. Draw your arrows to indicate it goes on forever. And don't forget to shade. This one you are going to shade below the line because it's less than. So everything that almost touches the line below is a solution. Anything in that shaded area. Don't remember, you could have picked a testing point and plugged it in. But I think we're past that. Problem one. Shading a system, or excuse me, graphing a system now. What is the graph of the following system? Just remember that the graph is the answer. Well, we have equation number one, and we have equation number two. Equation number one is ready to go. We have our y-intercept, or our b, of negative three. We have our slope of two over one. We are going to make sure we use a broken line, because our boundary line is not part of our answer, because it's not equal to. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we will shade below. Now the reason we're going to shade below, because we see the less than sign. Number two, I got to set this thing equal to y, so let me rewrite it. Now take the 2x away from each side. You get a negative 2x when you move it over. Don't forget about the plus 2. That is now a y equals equation, or y equals mx plus b format. Your y-intercept is 2. Your slope is negative 2 over 1, so down to right 1. And you are going to use, again, a broken line because it is not equal to. And you will shade above because it is greater than. Okay, let's go ahead and today, I just had them, here they are. Today, we get to color. So if you're into art, here you go. Today is your day. Um, now the reason we're going to color is because I'm going to do number one in red, I'm going to do number two in blue, and where they overlap, what does that make? Purple. Where you see purple, the purple is the final answer. We're going to make it nice and dark to indicate that's my final answer. So number one, I am going to go down three. One, two, three, I'm going to make my y-intercept. Okay. And I'm going to use my slope to go up to right one, up to right one. Make nice and pretty. If you have colored pencils, it might be nice for you to go get them and come back and join me. I you know what? That's a pretty good 
Um, that's, that's enough points. I'm going to connect it with a broken line. Again, this is here. I'll, I'll circle it. There we go, color coding. Connect it with that broken line. There it is. And I'm going to shade. You might want to shade lightly. Shade below. Real light. Light enough so you can see it, though. Or dark enough so you can see it. Light enough so that you can draw over it. Okay, so, so far that's part of my solution. Now for this side. Ready? I'm going to circle it in blue. It's kind of blue. I don't know what they call it. Okay. Um, you ready? Y-intercept of up two. And down two, right one. Down two, right one. Do not worry that these didn't meet at a perfect point. That's fine. Down two, right one. And again, another broken line. Kind of hard when they overlap. That's why I don't want you to graph the one um, too dark, okay? And then we're going to shade above that line. So I'm going to pretend here's my line. I'm going to pretend the line's falling. And I shade above the line. So that's up here. Yay! You see how they're overlapping? Where they're overlapping and kind of making a purple-ish color. Or maybe just overlapping. I don't know why purple's not happening. There we go. Where they're overlapping is your final answer. So what we're going to do is we're going to shade this in nice and dark to indicate that you know this area is the final, final, final answer. Because it's everything in this shaded area, if you wanted to, you could pick a testing point here. Maybe you want to test like over 10 up 0. If you plug in 10 for x and 0 for y, you get a true statement on both of your inequalities. So everything in that shaded answer not included this is the boundary line, not included because it's broken. But everything in that shaded area is a solution. It fits both inequalities. Let's move on. Alright, yay, we get to try it again. Okay, blue and red again. We'll do number one first, nice and easy, and number two needs to be fixed a little bit. Number one, it is ready to go because it has y equals mx plus b formula. The b is 5 and the slope is a hidden negative 1 over 1. We are going to use a solid line because it is equal to and we are going to shade above. And then number 2, we are going to rewrite it because it is not in the format for graphing that we like it to be for a straight line. All right, so there I go, I rewrote it. And now we're going to move the 3x over, positive 3x minus a 4. The b is negative 4, and the slope is 3 over 1. Next, we are going to make sure that we use a solid line because it's an equal to statement. And this one we're going to shade below because it is less thin. Okay? Now let's go ahead. We'll do the first one in red, just like we did last time. We'll do the second one in this weird shade of blue. And let's graph. All right. So start by going up five on the y-axis. One, two, three, four, five. Make your y-intercept dot. And go down one, right one, down one, right one, down one, right one. I think you get the drift, right? Kind of nice to put these dots on. Okay. Connected with a solid line, you might want to use a ruler. I might want to use a ruler. And shade above the line. Pretend the line is falling. Whee! And then shade above that area. Shade lightly because we're going to darken the area that's the final answer. All right. Next, y-intercept of a down 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4 on your y-axis. And then slope is up three, right one, up three, right one. Did I do that right? Yep, up three, right one. Okay, we got our four dots here. You can do more dots, or if you really want to, I guess, you can do less dots. But the more dots you have, the prettier it is. Connect using a solid line. There we go. And we are going to shade below. So see how the line is falling? Like if gravity took effect, we shade below that. So anywhere over here. And look at that. 
It kind of happens in the same type of area the last problem did. That won't always happen. Now this time, let's see who really listens to the video. This time, you can see that your answer, let me throw the pencil around. This time you can see your answer does include your boundary lines because your boundary lines are solid. That means anything on the line, you might want to write this down, hold on, let's shade. And then we can write it down. Ready? Anything on the line, anything on the line, and anything in the the dark, the dark area, can we, the double shaded area, the dark area, whatever you, however you want to say it, um, is a solution to both in equalities dot and there you go problem two now what problem two wants you to do is it's kind of hard to see they want you to take something that they've double shaded and they want you to come up with the equation so what's hard for you to see is the double shading occurs here um, black and white you know it doesn't always do it justice this is where the double shading happens okay that's where the double shading area is. So if you want to just, maybe even just take your regular pencil and just darken it, that's where the, we're going to say the double shading occurs. Okay, so let's label this line as line one and this line as line two. And are you ready? Line number one. We know we're going to have a Y, we know we're going to have an X. Okay, let's start here. According to line one, the solid line, and I don't know, do you want to write that? That's the solid one. Is it shaded above or below the solid line? Take a moment and answer the question. Shaded above or below the solid line? Above. So we're going to use greater than. But ah, we're not just going to use greater than. We're going to use greater than or equal to because it's a solid line and it's shaded above. Now, let's find the y-intercept looking, 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 there it is, right? The y-intercept occurs right there. Well, that y-intercept is a negative one, which means there's a minus one in the back of this. Now we have to find the slope. Well, if negative one was the first point, I'm gonna go and see the perfect next corner. Ooh, there it is. It occurs right there, but actually at, let's zoom in. Oh boy, this will be cute to see if I can do this. Oh, am I making you dizzy yet? Fancy, fancy, huh? So if this was the y-intercept, you see how it crosses at a perfect corner here, 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 so on and so forth? When they cross at perfect corners, you're going to say, okay, well, that went up one, right one, up one, right one. So that means my slope is up one, right one. So that's indicated by m equals 1 over 1 or m equals one. So we can put this one in front of x, but what have you learned, guys? If there's a one in front of x, do we usually write it? No. So that is the prettiest way of writing the equation of a solid line. Now for the second line, the broken line. Do, 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 broken. Okay, you know you're gonna have a y, and you know you're gonna have an x. Okay, let's take a look at the broken line, number two. Is it shaded above or below the broken line? It's shaded below the broken line, isn't it? The double shaded area. The double shaded area is shaded below the broken line. So what we're gonna do, 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 do back, is we're gonna do a less than because it's shaded below. I'm not gonna make it equal to because it is not a solid line. Let's look at the y-intercept. The y-intercept occurs way up here at one, two, three, four, five. Way up there at five, as long as I counted, right? It occurs at five. Now, I'm gonna go down one and it doesn't meet exactly here. It does meet exactly here at this corner of the grid. So this one goes down one over two. Let's check it one more time. Down one over two, perfect. So this slope, is down one over two. Well, that doesn't reduce anymore. So I do need a negative one half in front of x. And do you remember what our y-intercept was? It was a positive five. 
So the question says, let me zoom out. Ooh, dizzy. The question says, what system of inequalities is represented by the following graph? Bam, we got it all done. Good job. We'll do the next couple of problems in the next video.